Hello, CTR family. Happy Easter. My name is Angie Hall. Many of you may know me from Catholic Scripture Study or other adult faith formation programs, but others may know me through my husband, Deacon Greg Hall, who sadly passed away last year. I miss him dearly, and I know that you do as well. But through him, I am still deeply connected to the diaconate family, and it is my prayer that our deacon in heaven will be present with us in spirit today. And today is the seventh Sunday of Easter, and the day we celebrate the Feast of the Ascension of our Lord. And today I would like to offer some of my thoughts that I've been contemplating these last several weeks. And what I hope to do is offer a way to reframe our current sufferings and challenges within the context of the Paschal Mystery, the Passion, Death, and Resurrection of our Lord. Easter is the fulfillment of the Paschal Mystery. St. John Paul II in an Angelus Address said, We are an Easter people and Alleluia is our song. Isn't that beautiful? But does that mean that we as Easter people will always have sunshine and rainbows in our life. We know all too well that it does not mean that. But he goes on to say that we do not pretend that life is all beauty. We are aware of darkness and sin, of poverty and pain, but we know Jesus Christ has conquered sin and passed through his own pain to the glory of the resurrection and we live in the light of his Paschal mystery. He says, we are not looking for a shallow joy, but rather a joy that comes from faith. Later on, he says, we realize that joy is demanding. It demands unselfishness. It demands a readiness to say with Mary, be it done unto me according to thy word. As members of the body of Christ, we live this mystery every day. Through our baptism, we have died and risen with Christ. As Christians, though, we are not exempt from suffering. Our Lord suffered greatly. Our Blessed Mother suffered. The saints were martyred, many of them. And all of the apostles, with the exception of St. John, were martyred as well and they were all greatly loved by God. So when suffering and affliction find us, brothers and sisters, we do not have to feel singled out or unfavored. We are in very good company. All of us experience little deaths from time to time. For some, they can be a real death, the loss of loved ones. For me, the loss of my dear husband. For my children, the loss of father and grandfather to their children. But there are other types of death. It can be the loss of health, the loss of a job or a workplace, of being near loved ones and being able to hug them. It can be the death of the loss of our way of life and the loss of our peace of mind. The recent events of the COVID virus outbreak bring all of this home to us with the subsequent quarantine and the economic crisis, the closing of schools, and especially the restrictions and celebrating of the mass, the public mass that has kept us away from the Eucharist. This has been especially a challenging and painful death. But these uncertain times bring the shocking reality that nothing in this life is permanent. As for me, I took for granted that I could attend Mass every Sunday or daily if I wanted to, and that I could have received the Eucharist. Well, all of that changed in the blink of an eye. Not too long ago, it was Lent. We were on a 40-day journey with Jesus in the desert. It was a time of penance and preparation, and we fasted from meat and food and festivities. But this Lent was like no other. We ended up fasting from life as we knew it and from security as we knew it. I read on social media 
that it was the lentiest Lent that ever Lented. And that was certainly the case. Keeping the Paschal Mystery in mind, though, we can consider the time of our quarantine as time spent in the tomb. And when we're in the tomb, we can be tempted to despair. We can be tempted to think it is all over and there is no way out. And it can certainly appear so. It appeared so 2,000 years ago on Good Friday. But looking at it through the lens of the resurrection, we know that with God, all things are possible. It is a time of possibility, of promise, and of purpose. For some of us, it was a time of stillness and inactivity. And the good that came is that it provided an opportunity for self-reflection, re-examination of priorities, and an increase in prayer life. For others, it was a time of stress, of increased activity and probably too much togetherness, with spouses working from home, children being homeschooled and babies that needed attending. What they experienced was perhaps barely controlled chaos. But their prayer was probably the sacrifices each one was making for the other every single day. One common little death that we shared was our not being able to receive the Eucharist because they restricted the celebration of public Masses. But the only good that I see that came from that was that it created a holy longing. And speaking for myself, it was an intense longing that I had really never experienced to that magnitude. The prayer on all of our lips, I'm sure, was, My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. I don't think we'll ever take the Eucharist for granted or being able to attend Mass anymore. We were all suffered and entombed in different ways, but each of us could take our individual suffering and unite it to the Paschal Mystery of Christ. Right now, we're experiencing a type of resurrection. It's the slow transition to celebrating the public mass, to receiving the sacraments, the reopening of restaurants and businesses, but it doesn't look like we expected, and it doesn't look like we remembered, and it doesn't look like we would want it. We miss our beautiful parish being filled to the brim with families and worshipers. There is still so much uncertainty and confusion. But that's okay. Once again, we're in good company. 2,000 years ago, Mary Magdalene didn't recognize Jesus outside of the garden. The apostles didn't recognize him on the road to Emmaus. And we remember Thomas, doubting Thomas, who would not believe until he placed his hands in the Lord's wounds. So our little resurrections are not always as neat and tidy as we would like them to be, but we can still go forward in faith. Our deacons and wives have offered past reflections on patience, intentionality, on being living stones to one another, the practice of mercy, to remember perseverance, and to have hope. And it is these qualities Trust in God and being little Christ to one another that will see us through the weeks and months ahead. As we face the challenges of each day, we can find solace in the knowledge that we are not alone. Just as not too long ago, we walked the way of the cross with Jesus, virtually. We can rest assured that he walks with us in our little way of the cross. During Greg's illness, when words failed us, we like to keep an image of Jesus being near to us. And the image we seem to always go to was the apostles in the boat on the stormy seas. They were terrified, and we were terrified. But we knew that Jesus was in the boat with us. And even though he was asleep, he was near, and we only had to call out to him. And even though our prayers were not answered in the way we desired, 
there was a comfort in knowing that God's will was perfect, even though we didn't understand it. God never took his eyes off Greg, and he never takes his eyes off of us. We are in the palm of his hands, and his will is perfect. In last Sunday's gospel, Jesus tells us that he is going to the Father and we will no longer see him. But we know that he will not leave us orphans. Pentecost is upon us, and he will send us an advocate, the Holy Spirit. We are not alone. In this week's gospel, St. Matthew writes that before Jesus ascends into heaven, he tells the apostles, Behold, I am with you always until the end of the age. Brothers and sisters, we are not alone. Going forward, let us keep the Paschal mystery of Christ in our hearts and minds. Let it give meaning and purpose to the sufferings, little deaths, and the challenges that we face every day. Let us keep our eyes on the promise of the resurrection, and let us take the long view the arc across time and into eternity when all things will be made new. I would like to leave you with a favorite quote of mine from St. Teresa of Avila. She says, Let nothing perturb you. Let nothing frighten you. All things pass. God does not change. But does this mean that we will never be sad or frightened or scared? that we need to put on a happy face? No, it doesn't. What it means that the tr is that the troubles and anxiety of this world will pass. God is the one constant in our life. When we are overcome by sadness or fear or suffering, when the pains of loss threaten to overwhelm us, St. Teresa encourages us to look at the cross and be filled with peace knowing that Christ has walked this road and walks it now with us and with our brothers and sisters. On this Ascension Sunday, let us look to heaven where there will be no more sadness and no more tears, and there will be a deep and everlasting joy and a peace beyond all understanding. Brothers and sisters, may God bless us and I wish you a joyful Ascension Sunday.